Hello, my name's Amanda Little and welcome to my channel. This is Little Quilt House. Thanks so much for joining me today. As promised, we're going to continue with the baby play mat and this week I've got a binding extravaganza planned for you. Before we get started on the tutorial, I just wanted to remind you that this baby play mat is the giveaway prize. To begin with a chance of winning this baby play mat, all you need to do is subscribe to my channel and give this video a big like. I'm going to take you through step by step the way that I like to bind my own quilts. If quilt binding's always been a bit of a mystery to you, if you've struggled with it in the past, then hopefully this tutorial is going to show you a quick and easy way to get that binding on your quilt. Now I can't take complete credit for the methods I'm going to show you in this tutorial. A lot of my inspiration came from Sharon Shamba, having watched her videos in the past. What I can say is this method is guaranteed to give you a real crisp, clean binding on every quilt that you do. So without further ado, let's crack on with the tutorial. Now here's the completed quilt. I've gone ahead and trimmed it and overlocked the edges. I find that overlocking the edges makes it a lot easier to get your binding on. For this quilt, I've picked the green stripe binding. You can see it matches the fabric already used in the quilt. I do like a stripe binding as well. I think it just gives a little bit more interest to the quilt. Now we're gonna go ahead and prepare a double fold stripe binding. I've gone ahead and cut six two and a half inch width of fabric strips. This should be plenty to finish off the baby play mat. To work out your binding quantities, measure the perimeter of your quilt and then just add on another 12, maybe 15 inches just to be able to manoeuvre. Working on one strip at a time, just open the binding out and we're going to fold one end on each strip of binding over to create a 45 degree angle. I find it's best to use this salvage edge where you've got your little pinholes and just line that up across the bottom so that you know that this is all going to be lost and you'll only be left with good fabric. So on each strip, just repeat that procedure on one edge of all six binding strips. We're going to now glue base the binding strips together. I'm going to be using some washable school glue. I like to use the Elmer's washable school glue. It's cheap, it's readily available. You can get it from Amazon or from B&M home stores. It is completely washable. I've done many quilts using this glue and I can tell you that it is completely washable. Even if you don't choose to wash your quilts, with use, with handling, that glue will soften and you won't even realise that it's there. Working on the first two strips, turn the one strip over, right sides facing up, with the unfolded edge there. We're now going to apply a tiny little line of the washable school glue along that 45 degree fold line and align the binding strips up. This method is brilliant for a stripey fabric because you can line up the stripes before you get to the sewing machine and you know that it's going to be a continuous pattern all along your binding. Now the Elmer's School Glue has quite a, a big opening and it's difficult sometimes to be accurate with it and you want the tiniest, tiniest fine line of glue. So what I've done I've decanted a small amount into a squeezy bottle with a really fine metal tip. Again, these are widely available on Amazon. And all that I do is just draw on a really fine line, approximately one eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. With the glue now, whilst I'm not using it, I'm just going to pop it or pop some cling film on the top that just stops the tip from getting bunged up with dried glue and now what we're going to do is fold over that binding making sure that our stripes line up and that the top and the bottom line up 
and we're going to press it with a hot dry iron. Just leave it to cool for a second or two and that now has given us a really crisp line to sew along and the strip is good and secure so that we won't need any pins we can just pop it straight under the machine and chain piece I'm going to continue now to add all the other strips and I'll just whiz across that line on all six pieces okay so now we've got one huge length of binding and what I'm going to do I'll just open that fold using a standard stitch length I'm not going to reverse to secure the stitches I'm just going to stitch straight through I'm just going to stitch all six pieces together Here are all of our join binding strips. I'm just going to separate them now. Now we just need to trim those seams back to one quarter inch. Before we do that, just pull that glue apart because eventually we want to press those seams open and if we trim before we pull the seams apart we're not going to be able to get those seams open so again just take either side pull to separate the seam now I've gone across and I've popped open all of those seams that we glue basted and I'm now just going to take ruler and rotary cutter I'm just placing that quarter inch line on top of the stitching line and I'm just going to trim across to trim those seams down and again just repeat that on every join. Don't worry about the dog ears we can trim those when we press the binding in half lengthways. Now we just need to press the binding in half wrong sides together along its length so that the folded binding now will measure one and a quarter inches. Now when you get to your diagonal seams just press them open and then continue to press wrong sides together along the length. It's at this point now that I usually trim off those dog ears. Here's our lovely finished binding nice and neatly folded in half lengthways those stripes nicely matched what I'm going to do now is bring the quilt in and we're going to walk the binding round first we don't want if we can help it to have any of these joints these diagonal seams close to the corners of our quilt it's just going to make it very bulky and tricky for us to hand stitch it down so that's the next job here then is our quilt and what we're going to do is just walk our binding all the way around the edge of the quilt. What we want to do is avoid having these diagonal seams on that corner. So if you walk it round, imagine your mitered corners. That is what we're after, just a continuous run of flat fabric. This, however, would cause us a problem. So if that diagonal seam lands in the corner, 
we're folding it back, folding it back on itself. So we've now got four layers of fabric with that seam allowance and when we come to turn it back you're going to have a lot of bulky fabric to try and hand stitch through. We want to avoid that. When you've walked your binding round and you're happy that you've got no nasty joins in the corners just pop a pin so that you know roughly where your start point is going to be and then we'll glue baste the quilt down. I've walked the binding around the quilt and I'm as sure as I can be that I've got none of those diagonal joins close to the corners. I've just marked the quilt and the binding with a little pin. And what we're going to do now is just glue baste this binding down so that when we take it to the machine, nothing's going to move, everything's going to stay perfectly still and there'll be no need for any pins or any wonder clips or anything like that. Just turn over your binding strip. Again, using the school glue in the fine tip applicator, I'm going to run a really fine line down the very edge of the quilt binding. Now, because I've overlocked the edge, I can use that overlocking stitch as a guide but I only want to be about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the quilt. I don't want to go as close as one quarter inch or any further across. So I've applied the glue, just working on the area that I can reach easily. And now just turn over. So this is the raw edge of the binding. This is the folded edge. So raw edge to raw edge. Press it down gently with your fingers and then press with a hot dry iron just to set that glue. Again because it's washable glue this isn't going to cause a problem even if you decide not to wash your quilt it'll still soften with use. So there's that bit nicely stuck down. I'm just going to move the quilt up and we'll just continue to that corner. And I'm just going to glue all the way to the end. Again, bring the binding down, making sure that the raw edges meet. Now what we're going to do, I'll just move that a little bit higher up. We're going to take the rest of our binding strip and fold that up back on itself so that it's level now with both raw edges of the quilt and just a real light press so that we've formed, it's tricky to see uh, with a stripy fabric, but we've formed a crease mark. Now that crease mark, I'm going to fold back so that the crease mark now is level with the edge of the quilt. And again, I'm going to fold and press so now we've got a diagonal crease line. We're going to sew our binding to our quilt and we know now to stop when our needle hits that diagonal crease line. So this now can go to the sewing machine. It's soft, it's portable, no pins that are going to stick into us whilst we're working. We're going to sew with, now this is where I work differently to, to other people perhaps. This is a two and a half inch cut binding strip one and a quarter inches once it's folded. I'm going to sew the binding to the quilt with a three eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you ever find that when you've done your binding and you've turned it over to slip stitch it down at the back and sometimes you've got a tiny little pocket of just empty space in your binding, sew with a three eighths of an inch seam rather than a quarter of an inch seam and that will eliminate that little pocket of air. You'll get a nice, full binding with quilt all the way to the edge. 
So now we'll move over to the sewing machine. So I've popped the quilt and the binding under the machine. I've got my walking foot on and I've got, if I just try and lift the foot pedal, you can see the three eighths of an inch marking line just on the throat plate. Now that corresponds to that gap, that, um, the, just the edge, the right hand edge there of that gap. So what I'm gonna do as I sew, I'm just gonna make sure that the quilt, edge of the quilt, stays in line with that edge there. I will just reverse a couple of stitches, but just stitch all the way down. You can see how easy it is. There are no pins to get in the way because the fabric is glued to the quilt. Nothing's going to shift. Uh, you, you're not going to come unstuck when you get to the end. Everything's going to be exactly as you placed it when you wound it down. So now as I approach that corner, I don't know if you can see, there's the diagonal line that I pressed in with the iron. So maintaining the three eighths of an inch seam allowance, as soon as the needle hits that line, I'll just reverse. And just remove my work from the machine. So there's our first three eighths of an inch seam sewn. I'm just going to turn back on that fold, bring the top back down upon itself so that those edges are level. This folded edge is level or just short of that edge. Perhaps just pop a pin in just to keep it secure. Back in now with the glue. And same as before, we're just going to run a 1 8 or a, a fine line of glue, approximately 1 8 of an inch away from the edge. Place it down. Using the glue means you've got time enough just to make sure everything's in the correct place. Press again, hot dry iron. Remove that pin and then we can just work our way down the whole long edge of the quilt. Now we're approaching that second corner, so we'll take the glue down to the end and press as before. And again, as before, fold the binding back on itself and press. Now that crease mark that we've just made is going to go to the long edge we've just basted and press and we're going to sew with a 3 8 of an inch seam all the way down until our needle touches that crease mark. Just lift that up. So we're on the last side now, I've just mitered the corner as I've done before, 
I'm going to glue baste just to there so that then we've got a gap approximately 12 inches wide with excess binding to be able to join them together. So I'll now take this to the sewing machine, back stitch to secure at the end, all the way down at 3 eighths to a point approximately level with the, the end of that block. Again, back stitch, but I'm going to leave the long ends intact. So our binding now is attached, we've just left a gap approximately 12 inches and now we need to join both ends and I want to join them with that same diagonal seam as we've used on all the other sections. So I've marked approximately what I think is the, is the middle of that block. So I'm going to bring one piece across to that mark and then just press to form a crease. I can remove that pin now. So now I'm going to open out that binding and I'm going to bring that fold line down to meet the edge of the binding. Hope you can see that there. And I'm then going to press, just bring this up, press that down. And what we're going to do now is just bring that piece of binding across. With this perfectly flat, I'm just going to run a little bead of the washable glue down that side. Press that across. Glue based. And at this point now we can just chop that away. And then I'm just going to open out this section. A little bit more glue. Tuck that piece in. Hold that piece over and then just press to set. And now we can open it up and just sew across that diagonal line as we did with the other strips earlier on. seam now is joined as we did before we just pop that glue basted line apart scrunch the quilt up so that we can maneuver this out of the way and then just grab your ruler and your rotary cutter trim away the waste and we're just going to press that seam open now and press everything flat. So 
So we've sewn, we've closed that gap and now I want to press very lightly the binding away from the quilt. Again, I'm just using a dry iron. I've not pressed too hard because I don't want to flatten the quilting design. I'm just going to make my way all around the edge of the quilt, just pressing that binding back. I've worked my way all around the perimeter of the quilt, pressing back that binding. I've turned the quilt over so I've got wrong sides facing up and now I'm going to glue baste that binding down all the way around. Now I'm going to apply the glue again on the very edge. Just a, a really fine thin line. On the very edge and then when I turn the binding over and I'm going to try and get the binding to match up with our stitching line and when that gets turned over I'll press it to set the glue with the dry hot iron but because I've put the glue on the very edge it's down, it's stuck, it's secure, but my edge is free and soft for me to be able to get the needle in. You don't want to get your glue close to that stitching line. It just makes it tricky then to get the needle through the glue. And again, that is secure and perfectly portable. You've got no pins, you don't need to use wonder clips. Pop it into a bag, you can take it in the car with you uh, when you park up. If you're going to watch the kids uh, at swimming lessons, that sort of thing, it, it's safe. You, you're not going to um, take yourself or anyone else out with your pins. I continue all the way around. You can see I've not bothered trimming off all these loose threads. I'm just going to tuck them in and forget about them. You've got quite a while to work with the glue before it becomes too dry. You could use one of the pens, one of the glue pens, but I find that they're not as accurate as that fine tip and they work out really quite expensive. Um, that glue will probably do, I don't know, half a dozen quilts, whereas a, a glue pen perhaps would just do one quilt. So I, I do really like the uh, the washable school glue for dressmaking as well as, as quilting. It's really good for basting tricky seams. Now I'm approaching this mitered corner. You can see on the front I've got a really good crisp mitered corner and what I'm going to do now I'm going to fold that binding over and the back mitre is going to go in the opposite direction to the front mitre. If we did the mitre in the same direction you get a strange sort of snout effect. So always pop your mitres in opposite directions. So I'm going to apply glue now just to the end, to the corner of, of the quilt, just to there. Get that down, stuck down nice and securely. And you can see by taking a three eighths of an inch seam allowance rather than a quarter, that binding is full. I've got no empty space on the corner and I'm not having to struggle to turn these mitres or to, or to turn the binding over for that matter. 
there's just enough room but it's good and full. You can see I've got a, a perfectly mitered corner. So I'm just going to continue all around the perimeter of the quilt, glue basting that binding down, and then I'll meet you back ready to hand sew it with either a slip stitch or a ladder stitch. Round, it's glue basted into position now. At this stage, I'm going to hand sew it down. I like to use a ladder stitch. I think that that's more invisible. You could use a slip stitch. You could also, if you prefer to machine stitch your binding down, machine stitch a scant one eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. Because it's glue basted and it's glue basted to that first stitching line, you know that it's not going to shift whilst it's under your presser foot. So if you sew a one eighth of an inch on the back side, you know that it's going to hit one eighth of an inch on the front side as well. So it, it won't gum up your needle either, uh, but it's a really good method for both hand and machine stitched binding. So the needles that I like to use are long darners. These are John James long darners. I really like these. I don't know whether it's old age, failing eyesight. They are a, a, a big needle. It, it's like a harpoon. But for some reason, I just feel that I can get a really good rhythm going with, with that needle. Let me hold it against there. So it is quite a, a big needle. I'm not quite sure where I got these from. I imagine you can get them from most online shops and um, bricks and mortar shops too when they're open. So I'm going to start. I've got a single thread. I'm using white. Ideally, you want to match your thread to the colour of your binding. Now, I haven't got a cotton in that green colour, so I'm just going to go with white. Using the ladder stitch, it's going to look pretty invisible anyway. It doesn't matter a great deal. I'm going to tie a knot. So I take the long end of uh, the, the, the long loose end of the thread, pop it behind my needle and then wrap it half a dozen times around the length of the, the shaft of the needle and then just pull all the way down and then you've got a nice little quilter's knot. Now I'm just going to start here, show you a few stitches um, and then I'll show you how I negotiate the corners. So I'm just going to go up into the binding just to hide that stitch and then I'm going to go through the folded edge of the binding. Stripes are a great marker. I'm going to go perhaps what, one, two, three, four stripes and out. It's roughly a quarter of an inch and then because we put that glue based on the edge I've still got a free edge there to be able to manoeuvre and to get underneath. Now I'm going again about four stripes and out and then I'm just checking on the front that I've only gone through the backing and the wadding. I haven't actually gone through onto the front of the quilt and I'm just going to carry on like that just pulling them nice and smooth. So now through the fold and out I'm just going to take a little stitch there and now I'm going to ladder stitch the length of that diagonal fold. So in on one side in on the other
and now that I'm at the tip of that um, mitre I'm just going to put the pin, the, the needle sorry, straight the way through and now just close that mitre on the front Now that that's secure, I'm just going to go straight through and back out. Actually, just check where I'm going to reappear. There we go. So that mitre now is good and closed. I'm just going to now carry on stitching that binding on. Because it's glue based, the only needle that I've got and need is this one. There are no pins, no wonder clips, so I can just sit with this on my lap whilst I'm watching TV in an evening. It is just really, <coughs> really easy to do. So here's the completed quilt. What I'll do now is parcel it up, keep it nice and safe, and when I get 1,000 subscribers, there'll be a random draw and the lucky winner will be notified. The playmat finishes at 60 inches square, so it's ideal for a nice chunky baby to play on, or it would look equally as good when they move from the cot to their very first bed. Don't forget, you can see me create this quilt from the very beginning if you go back and look at my sewing quarter promotional video where I pieced the quilt, last week's video where I quilted the quilt on my long arm quilting machine, and they all tie in with today's video with this binding tutorial. I'll link them both down below in the description box for you. So now that the quilt is all complete, next week I'll be back and we're going to change it up and go back to dressmaking. I'm going to be doing that jersey top, the cowl neck top and possibly a second version of the cello dress. I quite fancy doing the crop top with the big balloon sleeves. So if there's time, um, possibly two tutorials next week for you. So thanks so much for watching. Washing! So thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you next week. In the meantime, if you could give this video a like, Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so that you never ever miss another upload. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you could leave me a comment, let me know what, sorts of, what sort of tutorials you would like to see in the future. I would really appreciate that too. I just want to give you good content that's useful and helpful. Thanks so much then. See you next week. Bye.